Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. I bring to you today what I might call a classical edition of Cut the Clutter because all I am doing is addressing some key issues, some acronyms, some names of sort of exotic sounding places that might be causing clutter in your minds. Some of these questions I am anticipating, some I have received from many of you. Uh, because Kashmir is not a story that is about to go away very soon and with Kashmir lots of new elements have come in. To begin with for example, what are the Chinese complaining about uh, with India making Ladakh a union territory. So I am looking at five linked questions. I will first list the questions for you. Number one, what are the Chinese complaining about on what happened in Ladakh, what India has done in Ladakh. Second, what is this stuff that you keep hearing about? What's Exaichin? What is Siachin? What is Gilgit? Gilgit Baltistan? What is the difference between Pakistan occupied Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan or northern areas? Because these questions keep coming up. Amit Shah also spoke about it in parliament. In fact, he said that we will recover, we are committed to recovering Aksaichin as well as POK and Gilgit Baltistan. And he said, Hum iske liye apni Jan bhi de denge. So, what, are, what, are, what is all this that we are talking about? Three, what happened in 1947-48? Because once again many questions are coming up that could Nehru have settled this problem by recovering the entire territory? What exactly happened? Who was on which side? How was the instrument of accession signed? Very briefly, I know there are many people who are experts. Uh, I am not addressing them. There are many people who know so much about this that they might think this is uh, too elementary but I think elementary is also important because not all of us are specialists in everything but some of us are journalists so we can read up some stuff, ask people who know and try and bring you answers like me. Fourth question, by some part of our border, a large part of our border with Pakistan in Kashmir is called line of control but some part is called international border. Interesting question, were you even conscious of it that as you come down north to south, bulk of it is line of control and somewhere in Jammu it becomes international border. Why? Uh, and the fifth question I will talk about territory exchanges in the Jammu and Kashmir theatre since 1947-48. Because a lot of mythologies keep spreading and a lot of names keep popping up sometimes Haji Pirpa, sometimes Cham, uh, sometimes Siachin, so Kargil. So let me talk about these issues. So first of all, what are the Chinese complaining about? So if you, if you imagine that I am looking at or you are looking at the map of India, this is north, if this is north then this is the west and this is east, if this is north. So you see Kashmir right here, a bit like this, bit like uh, if I may say so like a, uh, it can look like a chicken, like a big size chicken or it, it can even look like one of those Maratha caps. So if you see that, then you see that the region to the west, the region to the west is mostly taken by Pakistan, it is mostly in Pakistan's control. So Pakistan occupied Kashmir which is about 13,000, uh, in fact if I say precisely about 13,297 square kilometers. That is to the west, further to the west or the northwest but more to the west of that is the what is called as the Gilgit Baltistan region. That is a large region that is 72,000 square kilometers, a lot of land but the two regions have a distinctive history and that is why they are today seen as distinctive and P Pakistan has worked very hard at making these distinctive. Now when you look at this then you see to the north and to the east. Now that is if you see international maps you will find that that area is shown as occupied by China. That is Aksai Chin. Aksai Chin literally means the land of the white river. Uh, every river is white in those areas. Uh, now this is the area which India discovered in the 1950s 
that China had occupied. According to the maps that India inherited from the British, this was Indian territory as marked by the colonial government. The Chinese didn't accept it. India wasn't really present there. So the Chinese came in quietly, took a lot of area. You know how much? 37,000 square kilometers. Exactly 37,244 square kilometers they took in Aksai Chin. And what did they start doing? What were they doing with this empty space? There was a famous or infamous debate in parliament where Nehru said, why bother about a land in which not a blade of grass grows? And then Mahavir Tyagi, who was an opposition MP and who had about as much hair on his head as me, uh, he said, so look at my head, not a blade of, not, not one strand of hair grows on it. Would, would, would you give it away? So that is one of those famous exchanges of Indian parliament. But the fact is that India wasn't really looking at Aksai Chin. Chinese came, took it over and they start building a highway through Aksai Chin. In fact, you will see one of the visuals behind me. This highway goes from Tibet to Xinjiang, two very sensitive and vulnerable regions of China. You know why? Because Tibet is Buddhist, Xinjiang has the large Uyghur Muslim population. So for the Chinese, which don't exactly believe in diversity, these two regions were their soft underbelly. They had to link these. So they built this highway going through this region. So when, the, when India realized that China had taken over Aksai Chin, then India started what was called as forward policy, which means Indian patrols started going ahead to see how far they can reach, how far they can reach and to establish posts like that to start reclaiming the territory and that's when trouble started. So the Chinese started building this highway in 1951. They completed the highway in 1957, but then it was not an as asphalt or a, a paka highway. It was a dirt highway and it's quite a perilous highway then. Uh, but then as Indian patrol started going up, there were clashes and you're this 21st September, October, you will see it will be the National Police Martyrs Day because that was the day one of these patrols uh, of the CRPF was ambushed by the Chinese when 10 soldiers were killed, two were grievously injured. So that incident marks the National Police Martyrs Day. I think that's about where the forward policy stopped. It didn't go much further than that. So that is the area of Aksai Chin of 37,244 kilometers that China has. And what's it complaining about? The map of Ladakh region that India has now put out, the new Union Territory, includes, obviously because India claims it to be its territory, includes this Aksai Chin area that's actually be, been in Chinese control for a long time. There's also tiny slivers of territory next to it that the Chinese occupied in 1962 during the war. In the eastern sector, they vacated everything they occupied. In the western sector, as it's called, the Ladakh sector, a few chota areas, uh, they, they did not vacate and those remain Chipchap Valley, etc. Some of those and are abutting Chipchap Valley, those remain occupied by them. So that is the area that Chinese are complaining about. They are saying India is once again questioning our ownership of this territory. That's an old problem. So the Chinese are not raising any new objection to anything India has done in Ladakh. Chinese have not raised any objection about Ladakh's status changing within India. They are only objecting to, to this territory having been included. Now, I am now moving on to my next question because that follows from the first. Now, if the Ladakh map shows, the new Ladakh map, Aksai Chin as a part of India's Ladakh, uh, and Amit Shah has said is committed to recovering it or India is committed to recovering it, see the map of Kashmir, the new Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Because as far as India is concerned, what is POK is also India. And whatever was POK in 1947 is also India. Why do I say so? Because part of that POK is another territory of about 7,000 square kilometers. That is 6,993 square kilometers. That is loosely called the Shaksgam Valley. Uh, you can Google it. It's a very exotic place. It's, it's you know, it used to be the old route to uh, Kashkar, etc. I am not qualified to talk in detail about that. You should read up uh, 
you all you should listen to William Dalrymple or somebody or uh, read up some of the books by Peter Hopkirk and others to know about that region that has drawn a lot of romance. But that 7,000 square kilometers of area, although Nehru in a parliamentary debate, uh, I think in 1962 or 63, said it was 16,000 square kilometers, but it, it's about 7,000, was gifted away by Pakistan to China. Pakistan did it on the pretext of settling its borders finally with China, but India saw it as a gift of Indian territory by Pakistanis to China and India continues to see it that way. So that territory is still again part of the Indian maps of the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. That is a territory that India claims as its own. That's in China's possession. That was when Pakistan, but Pakistan gave to China. A dog's breakfast. It's, it gets more complicated than that. Now, if you come a little bit south of that territory, then you got get into another interesting zone and you will see it on the map. Then you get this sort of finger or maybe a dagger like territory going into that area, which is right now in Indian control. And that is the place that this generation is most familiar with. It is the Siachen Glacier. So if you look at the map like this, you see this is a uh, Chinese controlled area, this is the Pakistani controlled area, this is where the line of control is running, line of control goes like this and comes back now, that's the Siachen Glacier. That is what India occupied or formally took control of in 1984 and if I may say so, to blow my own trumpet, uh, I had the privilege and I would say good luck and honor to have broken that story nationally of Operation Meghdoot whereby Indian army got there, you know, how much ahead of Pakistani army? Pakistani army had also launched an operation Ababil to get on Siachen Glacier. Indian army beat them by exactly one day and got there. That was called Operation Meghdoot. So India took that territory. What does that territory mean? And what is the issue there? The issue there is that in 1971, when India and Pakistan, after Shimla agreement, sat down to demarcate the border or the line of control. When they came to this place, they came up north and then they said, these are glaciers. A Siachen Glacier is the second largest glacier outside the polar region in the world. So they said, this is glacier, this is so desolate, who wants it and how can you mark territory around it? So they stopped at a point and then they said, the line then goes along the glaciers. Now, goes along the glacier, glaciers can mean it goes straight. So the Pakistanis and Western sources started to put a dotted line as if it was going straight north from there, leaving the glacier out of it. As you can see, it's a long glacier like this. India, on the other hand, said the line going along the glaciers means that line should then go along the glacier like this and come down like this and then resume. But because it was uncertain, both sides figured out that this was open to cartographic aggression. So by 19, mid 70s, India realized that Pakistanis were showing this on their maps as their territory and they were then uh, inviting and encouraging Western mountaineering expeditions to go to Siachen so that increasingly in global mountaineering and adventure sport uh, maps, Siachen will be shown as part of Pakistani territory. That's when India also started countering it by its own mountaineering expeditions. Uh, some of them led by a legendary mountain climber from India, Colonel N. Kumar, popularly known as Colonel Bull Kumar. And Bull Kumar led many, expect, many expeditions, including one to a place, and you will see it on the map, called Indra Kaul. Now, Indra Kaul is a very interesting peak. It's 18,911 feet or 5,764 meters. In fact, there are two Indra calls because in 1912, a British explorer had also found a peak just two kilometers from there and he called it Indra call, obviously not after Indra Gandhi. Indra Gandhi wasn't born then. But after Indra, which is the, the, the name of the goddess, another name of the goddess. So, but both are very close together. And that is the trijunction because right next to that, abutting that within two kilometers, two and a half kilometers is the peak called Siya Kangdi, also in India's control. That is the exact trijunction where areas controlled by India, 
Pakistan and China meet. It's almost a trijunction. And as you then go west of that, then you come into sensitive areas where the passes, Karakoram and then Khunjarab, through which the new big highways from Pakistan, China come into Pakistan, which is the juggler of CPEC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. So, what happens? What is the area controlled by China right there? Besides the area of Xi Jinping, the area right next to that trijunction is, you will see it on the map, is Shakskam Valley. That was gifted by, that was occupied by Pakistan from India and gifted by them to China. Now, that is what makes Siachen Glacier very sensitive. Now, there was a time when many people, including I, thought that this was a wasteful war, that India and Pakistan should settle, demilitarize the place, trust each other and let it be. But over time, I think the situation has changed and my view has also changed because now it's quite clear that you cannot trust Pakistan with these commitments because they haven't even kept their commitments after Shimla agreement. So if that is the situation, and given today's technology and today's logistics and today's uh, militaries, these geographical barriers don't matter so much. So today, Pakistanis and the Chinese, if India did not control the Siachen Glacier, they could have a dagger right into, into Indian armed forces back in what is called Nubra Valley. On the other hand, Indian presence right there dominates an area which is very critical for both Pakistan and China. That's why you find uh, why Siachen Glacier is such a, drag, such a dagger into Pakistan's strategic heart and why this is such, an irritate, such a point of irritation. So that is this very complicated uh, region. I've tried to simplify, sim simplify it to you to, to the extent I can. Uh, you want to learn more, I think you have to find a genuine cartographic expert there. Then what happened in 47-48? So I'd say read up some books about that. Uh, there's a book that I've been reading. Uh, I've been rereading after my college. Uh, and you will see a uh, jacket of that book behind me. It's called Slender Was the Thread. It was written by Lieutenant General L.P. Sen, who was, who was sent to Kashmir as a colonel to raise a new brigade just when Pakistani raiders were on the outskirts of Srinagar. And he was the one who then pushed them back, etc. So he writes an account on both seasons of that campaign because one season was 47, one season was 48 because you can't fight in the winter in those passes, particularly in the 40s. Now you might be able to do so. And he, and if you read that, uh, you will see with great clarity that when the raiders came in, he and the Indian Army, just one brigade, just under strength, strength brigade was able to push them out of Baramula, out of Uri, into Muzaffarabad but did not quite have the strength at that point because uh, Srinagar only had one dirt airstrip. It was very difficult to land anything but Dakotas there and after a while of the airlift, that airstrip was completely dug up and then winter came and the path closed because then Banihal Tunnel was not yet built. So there were no supplies. India had to wait for next year's campaign season when snows melted, by that time it was too late, regular Pakistani army had come in and they had also cemented their position. So there was a lot more fighting afterwards, but no significant territory exchange hands. And I think it is wrong to say that India had the ability at that point to finish this problem once and forever. India did not. And also it was very complicated then because both armies, both countries were coming out of, uh, they were becoming independent. Both armies were headed by British generals who were friends and who were exchanging pleasantries while war was going on. And while both countries and their armies were battling with the killings and the riots of the partition. We remember how many people got killed at that time. So it was in that complicated situation that that war happened. So to think that this problem could have been settled once and for all uh, is, I think, a stretch. You can blame anybody uh, going backwards. 
link to this is a further complication of what happened in what is called as Gilgit Baltistan and why are those seen as different. Those are seen as different because those areas were taken by Pakistan before the instrument of accession was signed by the Maharaja. And I spoke about it earlier this week, but basically the Maharaja had given that region away, Gilgit Baltistan region as we call it, away to the British on a 60 year lease in the 1930s. The arrangement at the time of independence was that with independence, 15th August 1947, all such treaties with the British dissolved themselves. They ceased to exist. As that happened, the Maharaja decided to send his governors and take over Gilgit, etc. But the Maharaja was too clever by half. He was trying to do it all by himself because he wanted to be independent. Everybody has fantasies. Uh, so he did not ask India for help. In fact, he did not sign the instrument of accession until almost three months later. Uh, so when his people went to uh, Gilgit, the troops there, Gilgit scouts as they were called, they revolted. Its commanders were British, British, uh, not British army, British, British. They swore allegiance to Pakistan. And that's how that region became a part of Pakistan. Pakistan thinks it became a part of their country even before the instrument of accession was signed. And Pakistan has worked this last 70 years to try and treat that area as distinct. In fact, they first called it northern areas. Now it's Gilgit, Baltistan. They treat it as their own province. Uh, and they, do, in their own minds and in their own sort of folklore, they don't see that region as a part of India. So for, as far as they are concerned, what we call as POK, Park Occupied Kashmir, is just 1300, 297 square kilometers, not the 72,000 square kilometers of Gilgit, Gilgit, Baltistan. Remember, six years ago, five years ago, I think in his first Independence Day address, Narendra Modi mentioned this area, Gilgit, Baltistan, and now Amit Shah has also done it. Now, uh, what were the territory, territorial exchanges? Since 1947-48, since the ceasefire line was drawn, there has been very little territory exchange. So that ceasefire line, which came to be known as LOC later, has now more or less got cemented as a permanent border. So I will tell you the few exchanges that have taken place. Until 1965, everything was very tightly monitored by the UN observers. They are still there, but nobody bothers about them on the Indian side. But very tightly observed, so it wasn't possible for any side to take any territory or keep it. In 1965 war, any territory that either side took anywhere, including in Kashmir, was exchanged, uh, was given away. So India gave away the Hajipir Pass to Pakistan, which a lot of generations of Indians have regretted. Pakistan gave away what they had captured in Cham. And similarly, in Lahore sector, whatever India has captured, uh, India gave away. Pakistan had a tiny salient in Khemkaran. They gave away. So all border, every territory, every square meter that was captured by either side in 65 was returned. But 71 was different. So what happened in 71 was that when Shimla Accord was signed, all other territory was exchanged. But Mrs. Gandhi and Bhutto decided that any territory that either side had taken in Kashmir would remain with them. So what remained with India essentially was a lot of the very vital areas India had taken in Kargil and up north from Kargil areas like Turtok and all that areas. Again, if you look at the map carefully, you will find abutting Siachen on one side, Ladakh on the other, very crucial areas. So uh, uh, what was called generally the Batalik sector uh, during the war in Kargil. So those areas, Kargil, Rajori, Punch areas, India had nibbled quite a bit of territory that remained with India, became a part of Indian controlled territory. Pakistan had the Cham salient, which they again captured in 71. They kept it. All other territory everywhere else was returned except a little salient in Kutch. That was the territory that Pakistan had captured early in 65 before the war in the little Kutch skirmish. After that, there was an international tribunal set up that gave an award giving away some territory in Kutch 
in Gujarat in the desert to Pakistan with 1971 war. Indira Gandhi said, I, we don't accept the tribunal award anymore. We have captured this territory. This will remain with us. Beyond that, there has been no exchange of territory except if you look at it from the Pakistani side, one, Pakistanis think India took Siachen in violation of all these agreements. Indian argument is, but Siachen, we always believe that the line of control goes along the glacier. Going along the glacier means this. It doesn't mean going, uh, going like this. So glaciers can't be no man's land. Somebody has to own it. And we believe that the line goes like this. So we own it. So once again, no exchange of land. Finally, why do we call something line of control and some international border? Because line of control is that part of border along that part of Kashmir where both sides have some bit of what is what used to be the Kashmir territory. Essentially, because the bulk of Kashmir is with India, it means that part of the border across which Pakistan still holds territory which is part of Kashmir. But you come, by the time you come to the Jammu region, Sundarbani, you remember the area where the two air forces fought their skirmish, Noshera, Raj, Rajauri, Sundarbani, and as you come south from there, you come to a, you, you come to a point where Pakistanis don't have any territory across what used to be the traditional border of Kashmir. That's why India calls it international border because there across India is the Pakistani Punjab. Pakistan though, and that's why this is such a complicated equation, Pakistan does not call it international border. They call it working boundary. You know why? Because if they call it international border, then they have accepted that Kashmir is part of another country. So this Tamasha has now gone on for 70 years. In this Tamasha, these new moves have been made. So since these moves have been made, and you will be hearing a lot about all these things, all these things will come back in our lives now and in our, in our debate. So I am giving you a ready reckoner. Also, uh, on Saturday, on the print, please look for the extracts that we are publishing from, Brigade, from Lieutenant General, then Brigadier, L.P. Sen's book on what exactly happened in the early days of that war. And remember, I'm just letting, I'm, I'm giving you a little hint of a story. This gives you an insight on what a shrewd mind Mahatma Gandhi had. And what, what kind of, in nuanced view, a man of peace who said war was the most inhuman thing, the stupidest thing human being had invented. You will read in the same extract, also said while justifying the need to fight a war. So please look out for that one and we will keep bringing you more details with some archival reading going ahead.